More than anything, I consider myself a, a composer, even more than, uh, than an instrumentalist or oud player. I've spent most of my professional life accompanying others. So when it comes time for me to play my music, selfishly, I want the best. Ismail Lumanovsky is an incredible clarinet player. And I could honestly tell you that Tamer Pinarbasha has to be amongst the greatest kanon players in the world. If you were to ask me, how do you find guys like the guys in the secret trio? The simple answer is when there are people of that caliber, of that talent living somewhere near you, you're gonna find them. The Secret Trio started getting together in my room downstairs to play music for us. Playing for ourselves, playing, playing out our hearts. That's why it's, it's the Secret Trio. It's not a very traditional approach to our ethnic instruments, but we're not trying to be museum pieces. We're trying to move the music, our history, and our instruments forward. The oud is fretless because the music that we play is microtonal. In the West, we use 12 tones. In the East, that octave is divided into many more tones. We have notes in between the notes. The instrument accommodates those microtonal modes. Tamer Pınarbaşa, who plays the kanun, he's from Turkey. Now the kanun is a 76 string zither or lap harp. Traditionally for a thousand years, it was played with two picks on each index finger. Tamer threw those picks away, grew his nails, and developed the technique of playing it with 10 fingers. If you can imagine playing the piano with two fingers, imagine the first person who said, I'm gonna try it with 10 fingers. It's literally that much of a revolution of technique. And this allows him to use the kanun as an instrument that can play harmony and rhythms. I feel sorry for people who come to see us and have never seen a kanun player before because they hear him and they think, oh, that's what the kanun can do. No, that's what Tamer can do. This is the piano of, the, of Turkish music. On the piano, between whole notes, you have just two white keys and one black key in the middle. I have nine black keys between two white keys, nine microtones. But it's not enough just to have the technique, he's also studied Western music. Thanks to New York for this, because when I moved here, I was playing with Peru, Colombian, or, you know, everybody. And then it opens your mind. Ismail Lumanovsky from Macedonia graduated from Juilliard with the highest of honors with Western classical music. But at the same time, he can improvise and perform Eastern music with the greatest of ease and joy. My father is a folk singer, so I grew up playing folk music with my father, but at the same time, I went to a classical music school since I was eight. By living in the United States, there is a lot of space here for music making. We're trying to find a new language that could fit both Middle Eastern music and Western music. We also challenge each other. If somebody goes off the road, the other two of us will follow and see where is that going to take us. Like a, almost a jazz kind of mentality. Whenever we are three of us, I just feel so free and there are some things coming out of me that would never come out otherwise. I think a secret trio you notice that each one of those musicians, they are specialists in, in their own instrument, and it blends together, and there's no music, there's no sheets in the front. It, it, it's, all, it's all coming from the gut inside. My father's an Armenian folk and liturgical singer. Amongst 
the Armenian community, everybody knows my father. And of course, because of my father being who my father is, I grew up accompanying him. remember those days. Every party, every picnic, it was all about our Armenian culture. I was five years old and I played at the New York World's Fair, playing my little dumbek, which was a Middle Eastern hand drum. But at the same time, I grew up with the Beatles. So it's always straddling this, you know, East and West. What a great education. Did I ever thank you for that? No, but uh, here's your opportunity. Go ahead, uh, tell me how grateful you are. <laughs> His ancestors are from a city called Dikranagert. As it turns out, he kept that dialect alive and he kept these folk songs alive. Now, my father did not do that consciously or intentionally. Uh, he just loved to sing. We went back to Dikranagert, where there are virtually no Armenians left, and brought those songs back in concerts. It was really eye-opening. They explained to us that we had kept alive the Armenian folk music outside of its birthplace. Sort of like discovering a dinosaur that's alive somewhere. It was uh, quite an emotional experience. Picture is a song that, like the best songs, came fully formed. I didn't have to work at it. It was suddenly, it was there. I recorded it on my first album. That album had worldwide distribution. Many different countries took that song, wrote their lyrics to it in their language, and it became a very important song in many different cultures. I was living in Turkey at that time, 1986, and I was playing that song. And then I moved here and I met him. I said, oh man, it's a special piece for everybody. Tamer is a Turk. I'm an Armenian. A simple Google search will tell you, wait a minute, you guys don't get along. Tamer and I get along very well. He's one of my dearest friends. Historically, political enemies can enjoy the same melody and suddenly realize, wow, you feel that too? Yeah, me too. There's an emotion to the piece that reached a great variety of people. It confirms my feelings about trying to unite and come together. That's what this group is about. That's what my personal musical life is about. That's why I'm proud to be a musician. <laughs>